It was a very slow day at Carinay Station as one of the shuttles docked. As the pressure doors opened, a single figure began to walk forward, its long black coat seemingly trying desperately to keep up with it around its feet. Its wide black hat tended to reach out and was completely impractical for that of a space station. However, it did give off a certain appeal. Those around that saw it recognized it instantly. This was a human. Humans are exceedingly rare in this sector and usually are limited to things like engineers and commerce. However, it is rare to see one that doesn't immediately go to one of the trading posts and begin speaking. This one got halfway across the entire station before it stopped at a simple bar and asked the bartender a few questions. The bartender, shaking slightly as it peered on a human, something it had not seen in a long time, attempted to steady itself as humans had a reputation for if they were not coming up and immediately giving pleasantries, they were in a bad mood and you did not want to see a human in a bad mood. The bartender simply asked, can I get you something, sir? The man did not change his facial expression as he said, tall glass of water, please. The bartender was a little put back at this as humans are known to drink something much stronger than water. However, the man continued by saying, I ran out of water reserve three days ago and I couldn't get the engines to cool off. Now I'm just thirstier than a shaved coyote or the heat rash in the middle of the desert. The bartender didn't fully understand what was being said, however, brought the water up onto the bar as soon as possible. The man instantly paid and began to drink the water as fast as he could, dropping the empty glass back down on the bar. When he nodded to the bartender, he began to look around left and right and saw what was clearly an alien prostitute. He moved over and began to speak to her. This turned out to be fruitful as these women tend to know much more than the local population as men tend to talk to them thinking, oh, this woman will never speak out to me. The one with the black hat took all the information, thanked the lady, paid her in a few chits, and moved. He continued farther down the station until he came up to the loading docks on the far side of where he had come in. There is when he saw his quarry. The two men looked at each other for a long moment, while the crowds around them noticed that each of the two humans, the only two humans in this entire station, were staring at each other with intensity in their eyes. They all began to back away as the coat from the one in the black hat was opened, revealing a very large piece of metal strapped to his right hip. The one who had been loading boxes turned to him, looked at him, looked down at the weapon, and then smiled. Without skipping a beat, the one who had been loading boxes reaches behind his back and begins to draw something from behind him. The one with the hat grabbed his weapon, pulled it out, and with a quick motion, everything stopped. The crack of the weapon was deafening inside the space station. As everyone ducked for cover, thinking it was some sort of sonic weapon, aliens that were more sensitive to noise were beginning to howl and curse and hiss at the sheer pain that was going through their head, but it was only one time. The man in the coat simply put his weapon back into the holster it was at, walked forward, grabbed the man who is now dead on the floor, pulled a small device out from his other pocket, and scan the man. And with a few other buttons pressed, a signal was sent out and a signal was received. Upon the holographic display that floated above the man's hand, it simply wrote the words, Bounty identified. Return for reward. The man in the coat walked up to the now deceased one, pulled out a device, and the device seemed to levitate the body as he began to walk away. The body was in full view of everyone as he walked back to his ship. On the way out, the magistrate got in his way and wanted to stop him. However, the man in the coat, without saying a word, held up his hand, slowly reached into his pocket, and pulled out a small data rod and handed it over. The magistrate put the data rod into his device, 
looked at the man in front of him, handed the rod back, and then simply moved out of his way. Though people had known this human that was now being carried back to the ship, they realized that he must have done something really bad if they sent one man to come after him with one big-ass iron on his hip.